Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create a shiny techno brass text effect in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions that I'm making right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows, so if you're using a Mac, whenever I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key, and when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up the new image dialog box. Now uh, let's name this um, shiny techno brass, shiny techno brass text because whoop, shiny doesn't have an E in it. Uh, and this is what we're making, shiny techno brass text effect. Now I, I call it that, it's not quite exactly correct, but uh, that's what it looks like to me. So the width that we're using is 3,840 pixels. The height is gonna be 2,160 pixels, resolution of 150 pixels per inch, RGB color mode, uh, and we're gonna use background content. Uh, doesn't matter, we're gonna change it. Our advanced options here are we're gonna be using Adobe RGB 1998 as our color profile and a pixel aspect ratio of square pixels. Let's hit create, we're ready to begin. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna change our foreground and our background colors just to give our uh, our text something nice to sit on. Nothing special, just a, a quick and easy radial gradient on the background. So let's just change our foreground color here to a nice uh, grayish of 575757. Okay, we'll hit OK. And then let's change our background color here to uh, 1C, 1C, 1C. So you've got uh, from a uh, medium gray to a very dark gray, not black. Okay, once you have that, we're gonna go to our gradient tool, that's G on the keyboard, or you can go over here to the gradient tool on your toolbar. Uh, and what we're looking to do is take the foreground to background colors, because that's what we changed our foreground and background for. We wanna make this a radial gradient, mode normal opacity 100, reverse is unchecked, dither and transparency are both checked. Go somewhere near the center of your document, click once, hold down shift, and then pull all the way out to the left or the right. Holding down shift constrains your gradient to a straight line like so. And since it's a radial, when I let go of the mouse, you'll see that it's a radial gradient from the center out towards the far edges. That's what we want simple background to put our text on. The next thing that we want to do is we want to change our foreground color to the color of the text that we need. Now this effect needs a specific color. So that's what we're gonna change our color to now. It's gonna be A0, uh, 6C, uh, 3, 7. Let's go, uh, a nice kind of fleshy, tanny, browny color. Okay, let's hit okay. And that is now our foreground color. And the next thing that we need to do is choose our text. Now you can do that by hitting T on the text tool uh, for, to get the text tool like so. Or you can go over here to the text tool. Now the font that I'm using is called Street Cred. Okay, Street Cred at 325 points. Now the rest of this doesn't really matter. I don't have any of these uh, buttons here checked because I'm gonna use a, a combination of capital and lowercase letters, letters but feel free to use uh, any of this as you see fit for your specific needs. Um, oh, and the street cred font that I'm using here, I have a link in the description below where you can download this font. Now this particular effect does work with just about any font, uh, as long as it's semi-thick because you, you want to see the outline and then the inner part uh, where the effect will be. But just about any font works. I just happen to like this particular font for this particular effect. I think it looks pretty uh, retro, futuristically cool. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna now click somewhere in our image and write our text. And as always, I'm using Pixel Magic for my text. Okay, once you have the text that you want, you can, uh, you can arrange its kerning, that means the spacing between letters, uh, and the way that you do that is you go in between the letters and then you hold down Alt and use your left and right 
uh, buttons on the keyboard, left arrow and right arrow, I mean, and you just move it closer and further apart. Now, I happen to think that this looks pretty cool just the way that it is, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll arrange it just a little bit more so that you can see how this works. All right, uh, pretty easy, all done. Uh, once you're done, hit the check mark and you have your text. Go back to your move tool, which is the V on the keyboard or the move tool way up here. And then we're gonna click and drag to the center. Now you should see uh, lines pop up like so to show you exactly where the center is. If you don't just eyeball it, it's fine. We're just trying to make the text effect. It doesn't have to sit in the center. I'm doing it so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Now, uh, the only thing that we need to do to make this work is use layer styles. There's no other fancy magic here. So this is a layer style that you can then save and then apply to any other text or object that you want to use this effect with. So let's get to it. Let's go down to our layer styles here. Let's go to bevel and emboss because that's what we'll start with. I'll move this up and out of the way. Uh, and bevel and emboss. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a stroke emboss. It's gonna be a technique of smooth. Depth is gonna be 100, direction is up. Size is seven, soften is zero. Now remember to uncheck use global light. Never leave that checked unless you're doing a, a, specific, uh, a specific thing that you need every single effect to use the same light. We don't really need that here. So I have never used use global light. Uh, so I think it should be unchecked by default, but it is always checked by default. So make sure that it is unchecked. Next, you want the angle to be 135, the altitude to be 40. The gloss contour that we're using is ring double. Okay, anti-alias is checked. Uh, highlight mode is gonna be linear dodge add and the color that we're using here is FFEAC5. Okay, uh, the opacity is gonna be 70%. Shadow mode is gonna be linear burn and the color that we're using here is a very deep brown of 2D2716. Okay, and the opacity there is gonna be 80%. The next thing that we need is we need to add in a bevel and emboss contour. So click on the little contour here and the contour is going to be uh, half round. So we need to make this half round right there, half round. Anti-alias is uh, unchecked and the range is gonna be 100. Okay, the next thing that we need here is going to be three strokes. So you do the first one and that's gonna be the top one and then you just hit uh, the plus mark here, one, two, and you get two more. Okay, so the topmost stroke that we need is gonna be a size of eight, position of outside, uh, normal is the blend mode, opacity is gonna be 100%, overprint is unchecked, fill type is gonna be gradient. The gradient that we're using is this guy right here, which is called copper. Reverse is checked, the line width layer is checked, shape burst is the style that we want. Uh, angle is gonna be 90 degrees, uh, dither is going to be unchecked, scale is going to be 100%. The next stroke, the middle stroke here, is going to be a size of 4. Position is going to be inside, blend is going to be luminosity, opacity is going to be 100%, overprint is unchecked. Fill type is a gradient, the gradient that we're using here is going to be this guy here, which is chrome. Reverse is checked, the line width layer is uh, also checked, uh, and linear and 90 degrees and dither unchecked and 100% for the scale. The next and bottommost stroke is going to be a size of six. Uh, inside is the position, the blend mode is going to be color burn, opacity is gonna be 100%, overprint is going to be off. Uh, gradient is the fill type, the gradient that we're using is once again copper, reverse this time is unchecked, align with layer is still checked, reflected is the style, angle is gonna be 75 degrees, uh, dither is unchecked and scale is gonna be 100%. Now that gives us a shiny, chromey kind of, uh, not chromey, uh, a shiny, coppery, brass kind of line around our text. From this point forward, what we're going to affect is the inside of the text, this brown area, and also we'll give it a little glow and some shadow and uh, shine. So let's move on to the inner shadow. Now the inner shadow that we're using here is gonna be a multiply. The color that we're using is black, which is all zeros. Opacity is gonna be 100%. Angle is 135 degrees. Use global light again, unchecked. Never have that checked. Distance is 12. Choke is zero. Size is five. Linear is the contour that we've got here. See if I hover over this, it's linear, which is the default one there. Anti-alias is unchecked. Noise is gonna be 0%. 
Next up is going to be Inner Glow. Inner Glow, as you can see, is going to give us this kind of cool little uh, inner glow that kind of rounds out the inside here. And what we do is going to have a blend mode of color burn, opacity of 60%, noise is going to be 0%, and the color that we're using here is this kind of uh, muddy brown of 7 b 3 Okay, uh, and then the technique is softer. The source is going to be from the edge, not the center. The choke is going to be 15. Size is going to be 18. The contour is that half round again, which is this guy. Now, if you don't see all of these different contours, then you want to go over here to the sprocket, and you want to go down to contours. When you click on that, it will say replace current contours with the contours from contours. Very odd to say, but it makes sense. Uh, and you just hit OK, and you will see all of these and then you just choose this half round. Range is gonna be 50%, jitter is gonna be 4%. The next thing that we need to do is satin. We wanna add in a little bit of satin here, which is gonna give us these lines in our text that makes it look a little bit more techy. Uh, blend mode is gonna be color burn, and the color is all black, which is all zeros. Opacity is only 20%, angle is gonna be 30 degrees, distance is 90, size is five, and the contour that we're looking for here is this weirdly humped guy right here. Uh, where did he go? I just saw him right there. Uh, and that guy is called Cone Asymmetrical. Anti-alias is checked and Invert is also checked. The next thing that we need to do is we need to do a gradient overlay. Now we're going to need two gradient overlays. So uh, once you see the gradient overlay, just hit the little plus there and you'll see a second one pop up. Now we want the topmost gradient overlay to be this. Blend mode of vivid light, dither is unchecked, opacity is going to be 50%. Once again, we are using our copper gradient. Reverse is unchecked, align with layer is checked. Style is going to be linear. Uh, the angle is going to be 90 degrees. Scale is going to be 34%. Okay, the next gradient overlay that we need is going to be this guy right here, uh, the bottom most gradient overlay, there are only two, and the blend mode that we're going to use is soft light, dither is going to be unchecked, opacity is going to be 100%, and this time we need to make a custom gradient, and the way that we do that is we click once on the gradient, and that will pop up the gradient editor right here. Now what we have to do, it's very simple, you're only working with these bottom um, stops, okay, these bottom color stops. Now the first one that we want on the left hand side is going to be this color, which is FFCC99, which is this kind of um, skin flesh tone kind of color, okay, so FFCC99, and that needs to be at the location of 15%. Then we're going to need another one over here, and this one is going to be a very deep brown of 301-800, okay, and that will be at the 35% location. Then you're going to have these two guys right here very, very close to each other, okay? This one right here, this brown one, is going to be uh, 663300, which is this kind of muddy brown, uh, and that's going to be at location of 49%. Then you need to make another one, okay? And this will be mostly white, almost pure white, of FFF7EA, okay? Once you have that, you're going to make that location 50%, and that gives us this straight line of uh, color change from this brownish to this almost whitish. And then all the way down here at the very end at 100% over there, we're going to have this other very deep brown of 1F1300. Okay, once you have your... Uh, custom gradient setup, you hit OK, and you will see it over here. Make sure reverse is unchecked, align with layer is checked, it's got to be a linear gradient, angle is going to be 90 degrees, scale is going to be 100%. Now to give our uh, text a little bit more of a, uh, a, a, a feeling of being kind of techno, retro techno brass look, the shiny techno brass text effect that we're going for, we're going to give it a pattern overlay on the inside also. And that makes it look a little brassier, at least to me. So uh, what we need here is blend mode of normal. Opacity will be 26%. And the pattern that we're looking for is this one called Zebra. Now you can find Zebra. Is it called Zebra? I am correct. Zebra. You go here to the sprocket and you go down here to patterns. Okay. When you see patterns, you hit uh, replace current patterns with the patterns from patterns, 
Again, sounds odd, but it makes sense. Hit OK and you will see your patterns. Then you want to choose this guy right here, which is our pattern that we're looking for, Zebra. Scale is going to be 400%. We want it pretty big uh, and link with layer is checked. The next things that we're going to do now that our text is basically done is we're going to give it a slight outer glow. Okay, uh, that will make it look like uh, light is reflecting off of all of it. Then we're going to give it two drop shadows. One drop shadow is your standard drop shadow underneath and to the right. And the other one will be on the upper left hand side, which gives it kind of a glow up there as if the light source were coming from the upper left. So let's start with the outer glow. We're going to do this outer glow. It's going to be linear dodge add opacity of five noise of zero. The color is this kind of orangey color of FF9536. Okay, and then we're going to do a technique of precise. Spread is going to be 20%, size is going to be 40 pixels. We're going to use this ring double uh, that we're going to use, which is found right here. Ring double. Yes. Uh, Anti-alias is checked. Range is going to be 50%. Jitter, we're going to give it a slight jitter of 2%. That kind of uh, gives it a little sparkly to it, but very, very slight. Uh, next thing is we need two drop shadows. So we'll click on drop shadow, then click on the little plus to get two. And the topmost drop shadow will be linear dodge add, and it will be this kind of yellowish greenish color here, which is FFFF66. Okay, then we're going to use opacity of 70%. Angle is going to be negative 45. Make sure it's negative 45 and uncheck use global light before you do that. Uh, distance is going to be 10 pixels. Spread is going to be 5. Size is going to be 10. Contour is going to be linear, which is the default. Uh, Anti-alias is unchecked. Noise is 0. Layer knocks out drop shadow is checked. Next and last is our drop shadow. So we're going to do a blend mode of multiply. Color is going to be all black. Opacity is going to be 100%. We want a very deep, dark shadow for our text. You can always make that a little bit lighter by going, uh, you know, lighter there. I happen to like it very, very dark to help it stand out against the background. Uh, angle of 135 degrees. Again, uncheck use global light. Distance is 28. Spread is 0. Size is 12. Contour is linear, anti-alias is unchecked, and noise is zero. Layer knocks out drop shadow is checked, and we are done with our text effect. Now, uh, at this size, it doesn't look so amazingly good, but when you hit Control-1 on the keyboard to make it at 100%, you can see all of the detail in our uh, shiny techno brass text. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.